So I'm going to give you five growing tips on how you can increase the yield of your lemon tree, whether it's growing in a container or right in the garden. These five growing tips will help your tree to be in its best condition so you can enjoy a bumper crop time and time again. Having a lemon tree in your garden or growing on your terrace, it's gotta be one of the most nifty little trees that you can grow. Horticultural bragging rights? Do you wanna slice a lemon with that corona bud? I'll get one from my lemon tree. And if you're not interested in that level of ascendancy over your friendly rivals, well, they're beautiful to look at. A rich source of vitamin C, and whoever's doing the cooking in your family, well, it's gonna keep them pretty tooled up. So without much more waffle, and before this sun burns me to a frazzle, here's five hacks how you can grow more lemons. You'll understand why later on in the video, but if you've worked it out already and you've guessed why, then let us know in the comments. So you've heard the saying, location, location, location. Citruses are sun worshippers. Whether you're growing your citrus tree in a container or in the ground, you want to make sure that it's at least getting a minimum of six hours of direct, unfiltered sunlight every day. You actually want to be aiming for eight hours if you want your citrus tree to achieve its full potential. Many times I see citrus and lemons being grown in the wrong location where they're receiving insufficient light. Planted in an area of the property grounds where they get overshadowed by the actual building itself. And this, this ain't no good. In time, if your citrus tree isn't getting enough light, it'll start losing leaves, it'll start looking really bare, and given enough time, you'll notice the bark will start flaking, it'll not produce any fruit, and eventually it'll die. And it's not just the lack of light that your lemon tree needs in order to remain healthy, to fight pests and produce fruit, but it's a consequence, a result of that lack of light, is that the soil remains fairly damp and doesn't dry up quick enough, hampering that water cycle. And that brings us into our second and third tip on how you can grow a lot of lemons. And they do interrelate, that's why I've tied the second and the third point all together. And that's watering and drainage. Now lemon tree is like a regular watering, but you wanna be careful not to overwater either. Now when your tree is getting the correct amount of direct solid sunlight, this is gonna make the task a lot easier. You're gonna water the tree and naturally the tree's gonna use the water and the sunlight's obviously gonna help to dry up that soil a little bit. And you're gonna have this little cycle going off of watering and drying. And this is exactly what your citrus trees want. This little process of watering and your soil slightly drying. You don't want your soil ever to be waterlogged and your tree to be just sat in constantly moist, damp, conditions. And you can help by planting in the correct location or when you plant it into a container, make sure that your soil is well draining. You add some extra perlite in there if you have to or buy a soil mix for citrus which sometimes has hardened clay added into the mix so that the soil drains well. Now you don't want to leave your lemon tree to dry out either. Here's a little test you can do to see if your lemon needs watering. If you're wondering what this is, this is to stop my cat pooping in the plants. It's a nuisance, it's a nuisance. It's just move away your mulch and already I can see <laughs> the soil's quite damp here. But you just dig your index finger in there and I can see it's quite damp. If it's damp down there, don't water. Hold off from watering until it starts getting a little bit dry. Now there's an exception to this rule of finger, we could call it is when your tree is fruiting. When it starts fruiting and blossoming, its water requirements are gonna greatly increase as the plant is trying to pump up and develop these fruits and fill them up with juice. So we're gonna need to start upping our water content. You can give it a lot more water as it needs it during that flowering and fruiting period. 
Now, fourth tip is fertilising. You want to be fertilising your potted or container grown citrus trees about once a month or bi-weekly during the growing season, which is spring and summer. And then you want to stop during the cooler winter months when growth is slowing down. Now, one of the easiest, most simplistic ways to go about that would be to buy a organic feed which is specially formulated for citrus trees. And that's because citrus in general need extra micronutrients like manganese, zinc, iron, magnesium, that a general fertilizer might not contain. So if you do decide to go down the route of buying a fertilizer for your citrus tree, make sure you look at the label that it's got these added micronutrients added into the mix. For convenience sake, I will add some links into the description to help you out. You see in that, we've got a little lime growing on our lime tree. It's really started doing well, our lime tree. It took a little while for them to get going. When you buy a new tree, sometimes it takes a few years for them to really come in to their own and it's really doing well now with its regular feeding, good sunlight, and it's popping out some lovely foliage, real lush. We've got a few little limes starting to develop, which is really, really cool news. Citrus are real greedy feeders, especially when they're grown in pots and containers because, well, they don't have the luxury and privilege like a garden grown tree that's in the ground that can reach out its root systems and look for sources of food and nutrients. When they're in a pot, well, their roots are contained and they can't stretch out looking for food in the same way. So we, we have to take care of that and give them that regular feed. And you've got to understand as well, when you're watering your plants and that water's dripping out of the bottom of your pot, that water is hijacking, it's leaching away some of the soil nutrients and things like that. So we need to constantly be putting nutrients back in regularly so our tree can thrive and produce well. Another thing you want to be doing at the base of your tree is adding a good thick layer of mulch. That mulch, firstly, is going to protect the soil from erosion, from the elements, from the sun, the rain, and so on. But also importantly, and related to fertilization, it's going to add organic matter back in to the soil as this mulch starts rotting down and breaking down and turning into soil as you can see in the video that's old mulch which has actually started turning into soil and we keep putting their new mulch on top it's going to feed microorganisms and increase soil diversity which in turn is going to feed your plant and keep it healthy if your lemon tree is actually growing in the ground opposed to what I've got, which they're growing in pots then, well, fertilizing is gonna be a lot more easier. You wanna be fertilizing about three times, no more than four times a year. And that can be easily done again by using uh, organic fertilizer that you can buy online or by simply mulching up well the ground around your lemon tree, adding some well-rotted manure to that mulch and that'll act as a slow release fertilizer providing your tree with a steady flow of nutrients as it grows and provides you with plenty of fruits. And to complement that, you could add a hand of wood ash to your mulch, sprinkle it around, say about a hand per square metre should be sufficient without going overboard and that'll add them vital micronutrients to the soil, keeping your tree nice and healthy. So we're on to our fifth Tip. And this is big, big news. You want to be paying attention and listening to this. And I'm going to quote direct. It says, foliage cut from healthy, mature citrus trees reduces yield in proportion to the amount of foliage removed. That's a big deal, eh? <laughs> what are you going to do with these? <laughs> Get all trigger happy? I think for now, until we find out a little bit more, put them back in your drawer. So why does pruning have such a dramatic effect on our citrus? Well, unlike deciduous trees, which lose their leaves in winter, they store carbohydrates, the energy that they've produced in their root systems. 
at the end of summer so they can get ready for dormancy. And when we prune back them trees, like a cherry, an almond tree, for instance, a, a peach tree, when we prune that at the start of spring, summer, we're not taking a lot of them energy reserves away because, well, the energy is down in the root system. But our citrus trees, they store energy in a different way. There's very actually little in the root system and their energy and carbohydrates and sugars that they need for growing is stored in the leaves and in the twigs and branches. So if we had to give this tree a really big haircut right now, at the start of spring, which is um, February, March, citrus trees are at their peak in storing food ready for that growing season, what are we gonna do? <laughs> well, if we had to give it a good haircut now, we'd be robbing that food supply. So what's the tree gonna do in that situation? It's gonna focus on popping out a lot more leaves and growth and it's going to give producing fruit as a, a lower priority. Unpruned lemon trees fruit earlier and more abundantly. Now you can write that down and stick it on your fridge. That doesn't mean that we're never going to prune our lemon tree. It just means that we're going to restrict our pruning activities, not get carried away, and save it for removing dead and diseased limbs, maybe branches that are crisscrossing into the center, and for correcting the tree. For instance, this tree is getting a little bit too tall, so we're gonna head it. I'm gonna cut this top branch, this leader, back. We're gonna head it, and I'm gonna take it back as far as possible, if we're diligent with our pruning, we can take back branches before the tree puts too much energy in them. What you also want to be diligent about is removing any suckers, and you don't even need a pair of shears with that, and I just throw that onto my mulch pile, and we don't have many, but it's good. It's good to keep on top of it, to remove them before the tree really wastes too much energy in growing it. Just make sure you keep your cuts to real necessary ones in order to keep the tree healthy. Here's a bonus tip because I'm so nice and if you haven't liked and subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? For me to blow fireworks out of my nostrils? There you go. Bonus tip. If you've not bought your lemon tree yet, well, lemon trees can vary greatly in production depending on the variety that you choose. For instance, here we've got a Lunero, which is uh, like a Four Seasons variety. Basically, it flowers with every new moon and it's producing lemons all year long and it thrives on neglect. Now you saw when we got this lemon tree about two years ago. If you didn't see that video, then I'll make sure it pops up for you right now. And you can watch that next. And we've had it two years and you can see in comparison with back then, it's come on tremendously. But it's only in this last year that it's really started coming into its stride. Now there's two takeaways from what I've just said there. First, get a variety of lemon that fruits often. Look for a four-seasoned variety or a Lunero, as we call it here in Spain. And the other one is, is patience. When you plant your lemon tree, it's going to take a little time until it roots, until it gets accustomed. Give it a couple of years and you'll notice that as the years progress, each season is going to be better and better. So if you want to know how you can manage and deal with pests in your garden organically and naturally, then click on the video that's just about to pop up anytime soon. If you want to continue to support the channel, then make sure you share this video or one like it with your friends. Hit that subscribe button and that like button to tell YouTube and the algorithm that you enjoy this content. Also in the near future, I'm going to make channel memberships available for people who are interested in that and the various perks that's going to come along with it. Until next time guys, it's been fun catching up with you and sharing you these five tips how you can grow more lemons. I'll see you next time.